Please, I have a special appeal. I want you to subscribe to Victor Olukoju PVO YouTube channel. I am begging you. Now beg at the beg you now. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to click on that notification bell so that you can get to know when we drop new movies. Thank you very much and God bless you. You know, sometimes when you listen to him, you will mistake him for a drama minister. You can laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh. But then when the administration begins and there's like this switch over. Ah, uh, yes, it's not a drama minister as it were, but um, a music minister. But let's see something that he did recently when he got married to his wife. Where's my wife? Where is my wife? Where's my wife? <laughs> Why are you laughing? Where's my wife? Where, 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 where? Oh, 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 there she, there, 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 there she, there she is. I don't have to tell you too many things about him. I guess he has to speak for himself. My name is Lawrence Oyo. I am a twin. I am of a family of Christian parents. Um, I've been loving God since when we were you know, aware of our, ourselves as children, born and raised in a Christian background, you know, to clergy parents. I'm a Nigerian. <laughs> and uh, my passion for God is just basically to see how those things that are rare, those things that are seen amongst only few people. I want to see those things replicated amongst so many people. So it might not be strange to hear a word like it will be many from my lips because I just want this thing to multiply all over the place. So I'm on fire for God by the grace of God and uh, I desire that you be like me and worse than I am in Jesus' name. Darling. Yes, love. How was your night? It was awesome. Did you see an angel? Did you see an angel? Did you dream of Jesus? Did you dream of Jesus? How was your night? What did you see? What did you hear? Did you have an encounter? Did you have an encounter? Did you see your future? Did you see your future? How was your night? What did you see? What did you hear? Darling, yes, Papa. how was your night? It was fun, Daddy. Darling, yes, Papa. how was your night? It was fun, Lord. The night is for visions, pictures of the heavens. Oh. Did you see the river? Did you see the river? Flowing from the throne room. From the throne room. How was your night? What did you see? What did you hear? Did you speak with angels? Did you speak with angels? The saints and the elders. The saints and the elders. How was your night? What? Lawrence Oyo is also a lawyer by training. Uh, I'm also a farmer. And uh, I'm also an author as well amongst other things that I find myself you know, doing. I'm also a creative person. I love creativity a lot. And so, um, especially among, um, around the arts and music and um, basically creativity in media. So, I try to just enjoy myself with some of these things in my own alone time. That's part of what I do. There is a picture in my heart An expectation in my spirit That is a recent development in the sense that I think that started this year. So we went into farming and it's a very, very beautiful experience. I got influenced by another man of God who is a friend of mine and has been into farming for many years now. You know. I got into it and I'm really enjoying the experience. 
Well, in many of the messages, I've gone, you know, to great lengths to prove again and again, like I said earlier, my desire is that everybody sees the fact that it's not for a few. And there's no way you do that if you isolate yourself from the fact that men have weaknesses. So I try to always present my days of struggles, my days of being like those I'm speaking to, so they see that there is hope for them. If someone like this was like me, then I can be like him a little more. So with regards to my days of, you know, pre-encounter with Christ and so on and so forth, it's like every normal child's experience. I didn't have very supernatural, you know, encounters like some people share. I didn't have a very special, you know, kind of birth like some people have. God has not been talking to me since day one, like some people have experienced, you know. I think my life was relatively normal and that was why I was crying out to God for an encounter. When I met a friend in secondary school at the age of about 13, in SS1, as we have it in Nigeria, you know, his life was supernatural. He was hearing God, he was fasting and praying, you know, he was moving in the miraculous and my life was normal. So if I was already having things going for me, I'm sure it won't be a challenge. But it was a great challenge because my life was so normal. I was a child that Satan would press in the dream and I would shout Jesus from my sleep. I was, in fact, one interesting thing about me was that I think it took a while before I finally stopped bedwetting. And uh, there are interesting stories around that. I've also shared some of these things in sermons. You know, I was like every normal child. I loved food so much. You know, I still have a thing for food, but you know, that was a great challenge. I didn't like fasting. I didn't understand why we had to fast, why we had to pray, you know. Like anybody who is listening to me would feel. But there's always a day when this story begins to change. And when the story began to change, by the grace of God, it was an upward thrust from then on, from glory to glory. So I didn't suddenly, you know, become dispassionate for God, like many people want to be all of a sudden overnight. My hunger for God has been fueled and has been on the increase for many years. So you don't look at a person in 2020 and start feeling like, why am I not like this person in 2020? My journey started before 2020, it started before 2010. So wherever you are in your journey, just start and trust God that, you know, very soon, what you have will be something somebody else will be looking to have as well. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Modern Entertainment. I would advise, first and foremost, if you find yourself in this, you know, having this experience of having more than one, another word to use to capture it is maybe talent or gifting. You know, you find that you can do more than one thing and you can do more than one thing very well. 
and it's almost confusing you on what your purpose really is. I believe purpose is beyond talent. And your talents or your giftings or your graces are just simply tools to help you fulfill your purpose. So if you catch me writing or singing or acting in a movie or preaching, whatever you catch me doing, the purpose is to drive home the points I've said earlier, which is to stir up many people to come into the fullness of the image of Christ as has been spoken concerning them as Christians. So that's really the purpose of everything I would be doing. Now, with regards to which one to give attention per time, it's dangerous to follow your feelings. Everybody has just 24 hours, and the truth is you have to give time wisely to different things you want to develop in your life. But the Holy Spirit is supposed to help you realize which season you are in, at what point in your life. It's not every time you'll be doing everything. So it's good to, first and foremost, take stock. I did that just recently again. What are the anointings in my life? There are a number of things that people have no clue that are in our lives. That they will realize as the years go by. Don't be under any pressure. Take stock. What are the anointings that are in my life? For example, I notice I have anointing for children. I have grace. For elderly people, I have grace for young people, that is youths and teenagers. I notice these anointings amongst others for trainings and schools of the spirit. So I had to begin to ask myself, okay, at what point am I going to begin to develop courses, for example, in training of children in the supernatural, you know, in this and in that. I can't give attention to all of them right now. But it's good to know that all these things are there. And the Holy Ghost begins to show you, all right, from 2021. Study around this, sharpen this grace in your life, the time will come for you to use it very, very soon. You know, and so on and so forth. Some of you right now have been writing, but you know God graced you with a voice. You receive songs, but you focus on your writing. An advice I would give you is to begin to train your voice. And one of the simplest ways to train your voice is to sing. You learn to sing by singing, it's that simple. Sing and sing and sing and train your voice. Let it open up so that when the time comes for God to do what he wants to do with that thing he gave you, you won't be found wanting because eventually when you stand before him like the guys with talents, he gave one, one talent, he gave one two, he gave one, you know, five and so on and so forth. Every single thing he gives you, you are going to account for it. So let him guide you on the seasons. When is each one supposed to open up? And as grace increases, you will find that you can actually hold all of them at the same time without any of them suffering, without any of them, you know, lagging behind. But music is very, 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 very powerful. So that I don't go into a teaching. I'm just going to be as <laughs> brief as possible. I don't know what this life will look like if you remove music from it. Music is one thing that you know, we still have, we will still have even when we get to heaven. Music shuts down the distraction your soul brings when words are spoken. I'm going to repeat it again. Once you put words in music, music that is acceptable by the soul that is hearing it, you have you know, once the, once the music has won the soul, that music has success or that sound has successfully passed that message to the soul that is listening. What do I mean? You can come up, preach a sermon for the next 45 minutes, and people find it boring, or people don't like what you have to say. But if you put that same sermon in a sound, 
that is pleasing to the ears, that is beautiful to the soul, whether they like the words or not, you have injected the words into somebody who does not like the message you are preaching because they can't resist the beauty of the sound or the music being released. When God showed me this, I realized it was a serious end time strategy to get a lot of young people. They won't know what they're saying when they're saying, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with Jesus, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love, I'm in love with Jesus, I'm in love. <laughs> it's just a matter of time before those confessions begin to bind you. Because our words bind us or free us. And it's good to be bound by that kind of bondage. You know, love for Jesus. That's exactly what these worldly people do. And they go a step further. They charge the sounds by making sacrifices so that whether you like it or not, this thing will keep on playing and playing and playing. And you know, the person who is singing matters because he's releasing those words from his you know, spirit, whether defiled or pure. And so as you're listening, Many things are filtering into your soul at the same time. What you are enjoying is music. But behind that music is a danger. The programmings are being installed as you're listening to those sounds. Some of you have listened to songs and you felt like praying. What makes you think that feeling of wanting to commit immorality is not so not coming from a sound? You know, that you thought was just random, was just normal. If a sound can make you want to pray, can make you break down in tears and love Jesus more, then a sound can take you away from fellowship with God. So it's important that you guard your heart and stop you know, moving like the wind to and fro and not deciding on exactly what you want in life. Yes, some of these songs can be very beautiful. I had a challenge with that you know, growing up as well. It seemed to craft those sounds very powerfully. You listen to them and you wonder why do we have to you know remove these things from our playlist. But eventually when you see what you stand to lose, you will know that there is nothing, there is not it's not worth, you know, it's not worth the grounds you would have lost if you sit down and digest those nonsense. Eventually you'll be the same person complaining, your prayer life is gone, you lost your fire. It all began as you began to feed your spirit with things that are poisons. How can your other spirit rise up at 12 midnight to start praying again? You know, so make your choice. Choose between good and evil. Nobody needs to teach you or preach to you or flog you about or pursue you. Check your phone to see if you are... Just common sense. If you want to make progress, then remove all the distractions and focus on what will help you make progress. Full stop. Beyond Entertainment with PBO. Yes, we are both in ministry. We are both, you know, minstrels. And we both teach the word and so on and so forth. We are raised in this thing. Praise God. Yes, that has happened throughout our lives. We have played all manner of pranks, as you can imagine, that twins play. I remember one day I went to his class, I sat down and, you know, knowing that there's no way this teacher will know that I'm the wrong person in the class. And throughout the class, the teacher didn't know. He went to my class, I went to his class. And, you know, people were just laughing, laughing, laughing until the lecturer was, was really confused. I wanted to realize, wanted to know exactly what was going on. You know, called me a couple of times to answer questions, didn't know that I was not the one called me God's will and it was just interesting so we play those kind of pranks before people mistake us from time to time in fact I've seen his picture on some flyers as me and I've seen my picture on some flyers as him so you don't worry yourself about that people are always going to mistake twins especially when they are identical for me this thing has been in seasons 2000 and 13 August 
I was in UCH, University College Hospital, Ibadan, Nigeria, um, in the room of a friend of mine. And when I heard the voice of God telling me, teach my church to pray. At that time, I thought it was my local church. You know, and I felt, okay, okay, that means I'm going to preach a message on prayer, and then we're going to start praying, you know. If, if that is all about it, then okay, that shouldn't be too much of a difficult assignment. Until he expanded further, and I realized, okay, it was the body of Christ he was referring to. And so, that's where my journey of praying began. It meant God wanted to restore an aspect of prayer that only few fathers, you know, know, understand and keep doing. A lot of people in my generation especially were not familiar and were not used to the fact that a believer can spend hours, as much as 12 hours, 24 hours, 48 hours, 120 hours, <clears throat> you know, praying in the spirit, generating power for your destiny. So I believe those were some of the emphasis that God wanted us to help restore for the sake of effectiveness in ministry and real weight that causes impact. And so we started doing that. And one of the ways, like I said earlier, was with the sounds. And so there are many songs on prayer that we have you know, we by the grace of God released that has also energized prayer. That's one of the, you know, um, loudest testimonies I always get. That we pray, we pray, we pray, we pray with your songs, we pray with your songs, we pray with your songs. God gave me a word, you know, some years back. He said, one sound will cause more revival than a million sermons. You know, and I held on to that. And yes, those days are coming. And even more ministries have begun to rise all over the nation that sounds that energize prayer. If you struggle with prayer, you know the value of sounds that energize prayer. You listen to it and hours are just going by and you're spending time in God's presence. It's beautiful. And I thank God for the privilege of being a part of, you know, the prayer breakthrough in many people's lives and families. Sometimes when I'm asked these kind of questions, I'm usually weak in answering because I just believe that if somebody has sense, your friends will look like where you are going. I don't understand why somebody will be studying medicine and all your friends are in, you know, religious studies or all your friends are in, where else, you know? Are reading political science you don't have any friend studying medicine and you're a medical student it's just strange it's only in church that these things are found and somebody is having friends sometimes even the 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 fiance or the fiance is of another religion and it's making sense to the person that you know he has a good heart he's nice and so it's only my generation that these strange things happen. I just feel like your friends should look like where you are going. Simple. You know, your purpose will fish out your friends. Those who cannot fit in will naturally fall away. You have no apology for them. You have zero apology for anybody who cannot run with where you are going. Because when you get to heaven, I don't know how you want to stand before this wonderful savior and tell him that it was friends like give him a serious reason for failing not friends not you know you didn't have good friends and that's why you failed in your purpose in life pick up your phone now if you have people who are a distraction delete the number block it it's as simple as that you see people around you who will help you who will push you for that get connected with them be humble enough to get connected with people you know are stronger than you you know in the area of your purpose you mentioned some names now every friend in my life has something that they have more than me they have a grace that is higher you know 
than the grace that I carry. I have things that they also need that I probably have on a higher measure. But every of my friend, you know, has an addition that they are, you know, that they, that they are in my life. And that's very, very important. Some of them are stronger in one area, stronger in another area. And as we collaborate, as we come together, iron sharpens iron. I become a better person for my generation. So I believe it's just simple. If you are truly a person of purpose, Purpose just speaks your friend. Nobody has to tell you, avoid bad friends, you know, bad friends cause bad manners and so on and so forth. I believe it's people who, are, who don't know where they are going that still have time for bad friends. In fact, you will come to a point, you will realize that even good people, many good people can't still be in your life because of how far you are going. You need only serious people, people who are as serious as you are. A person can be good can be a Christian, it does not mean the person must be your friend. Because at a level you will realize that only those who are serious as you are will help you on your journey, unless you are not going far. So the question is how far are you going? If you are going really, really, really far, I can promise you not every good person, even not every Christian, you know, will be easily accommodated in your life. Because not every Christian is serious, that's the truth. Not every Christian is hungry for the same things you are hungry for. And if you say, oh, he's a good person, he's my church member, and so on and so forth, you will just find that you are heavyweight, you can't fly, you can't move too fast, just because you don't want to offend people. So have serious minded people around you, people who motivate you. When you think you are serious, they come around you and you feel like you are not serious, you want to do more. Hey, hey, you're in the right association. They challenge you, they make you think like, what have I been doing all my life? Those are the kind of friends that I have. That's why I will never lose the fire. It's not a prophecy. It's not a statement of pride. There are structures around the fire, so the fire can't go out. This was how our fathers were preserved. They don't have nonsense people around them. So decide that you won't have people who are a distraction, people who are, you know, who contribute to to heavy weight or dead weight, I mean, in the spirit, so that you can't fly. People who are the reasons you'll be distracted. Those who will never suggest retreats, prayers, fastings to you. Those are not friends, even though they are, you know, Christians, they are workers in church, they are in your, they are in your you know, subgroup or whatever. You know, those are not people who are going to help you to reach your highest, your destiny. I'm not saying don't communicate, I'm not saying don't fellowship, but I mean if you are calling them friends, you know we use the words very loosely today, if you are calling them friends, you will eventually mirror your friends. So be very, very serious about those that you call friends. They must be people who are stronger than you, better than you, or at least ready to run with you, you know, to a better place than you are at the moment. A lot of people don't seem to, to understand the gravity of being on fire, having a powerful weight in the spirit. And then tomorrow, people come and are disappointed because your weight has dropped. A lot of ministers have fallen for this. You listen to this person, bless you powerfully. The next time you come in contact with the person, the weight has dropped. It's almost like the person is an echo, a shadow of yesterday. I don't think I want my testimony to be like that because the Bible says the path of the just is as a shining light that shines brighter and brighter onto the perfect day. You know, it shouldn't be that we look back at, for example, our Zion Faith Ministries and see that they were better then than they are now. It shouldn't be like that in any ministry, in any calling, in any life. You know, it happens in the world. It's like they just rise this year and next year they disappear, face out. Another person rises, the next year the person faces out. There are so many names that we can call now that you wonder is it that they gave them one year or two years expiry date 
once this person has done this for the next one year, rain, 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 and then they just vanish. I mean vanish. You don't hear a trace of them anymore. But it shouldn't be like that for Christians. Burn out simply means that the thing that you are preaching, you are preaching so fervently and you meant with all your heart, you are still preaching it too, but you don't mean it again from your heart. Burnout simply means you'll be living opposite from what you're preaching. You will sound fervent, but in the secret, the fervency is gone. Burnout simply means that you are beginning to minister from your reserve. I mean, the one, the life for your health, the life for your for 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 keeping and guarding your soul. You are supposed to minister from the overflow. Burnout simply means you are literally walking the machine. It's no longer an automatic. Burnout simply means that you are already in danger of attack. You are bare and you are naked. You will notice that when you step out to bless God's people, you go back, you face attacks. Unsteady. Because you don't have enough energy to attack and defend the ground that you have gained. You know, there are many signs that the person is getting burnt out. You will notice that your prayer life is drying up, fasting and study life is drying up, but you are still going from place to place preaching. I don't know why a person should allow it to get to that point. But if you are in such a condition, well, one or two things you can, you can try to do is right now, depending on how serious this is for you, if you are taking this matter very seriously, then your next ministration is not as important as this instruction that I am giving now. Shut down. It can be a week, it can be two weeks. Some of you need to shut down for as much as three months, six months, one year. Just get out of the scene. Leave, you know, actively moving around for now. You notice that you are already beginning to see loss creep into your heart. You are already beginning to see all manner of, of vices, jealousy, envy, hatred. For those God is using or helping, you're already beginning to notice that all the, you know, the fruits of the flesh are manifesting. You're finding yourself desiring what you should not desire. You are getting burnt out, oh, and such a person should not be actively dishing out life from place to place and just happy that your face is on flyers. If you love yourself, shut down the meetings immediately. That's the first step. I didn't say pray. Shut down the meetings immediately. After shutting down all the meetings, you know, take out time, get messages, get your Bible, you know, songs are anointed, and begin to feed again. I didn't say for administration. Because when you are burnt out, that's one of the signs again. You will be feeding to minister. And not just feeding, because you need to feed as a spirit man. So try and make sure that you don't get to that kind of point. Now, the structures I set around my life to keep me from that, because I treasure weight, I treasure the power of God. I don't want the results to, to wane or, you know, to depreciate. I want God to keep on using me. I want to keep being a blessing, you know. So some of the structures I put around that is intercession. There are many young people listening to me who don't have anybody, any structure of intercession around them. Some of these I'm sharing are from experiences. I've had experiences that I don't pray you have, you know, that forced me to set up structures. Then I realized that many of the fathers that we love and respect they have structures around their ministries, I mean structures of prayer and intercession that keep and preserve them, you know. It is the church that Satan cannot stand against. It is the church that Satan cannot stand against. 
no one Christian is a superman. The gates of hell cannot stand against the church. Ask James. They picked him and took him out. They picked Peter with the anointing, with the power of God upon their lives and so on and so forth. Picked him. We're about to also, you know, finish him up. And then the church gathered and shut down that plan. Because of that, we now have those books that we can read now. Only God knows how many books James would have written for us to read. And so it's important that we don't lose these shepherds that God has given us. I'm speaking now to those of you who are being fed, who are being helped, who are being, who are being strengthened. You say you listen to this song and now you are strengthened. Your prayer life is up gear. Now I want to ask you a simple question. How many days or how many, you know, how many times in a week or in a month do you gift that prayer life that you now have to intercede for those people who have been a blessing to you? Modern entertainment I would say I'm not really trying to manage it because of, I think, a grace or a mercy God has shown me. And that is that, <laughs> if I tell you it has not dawned on me, many of the things that people say, you might not believe it. It does not dawn on me that we are known or we are popular or we are influential and so on and so forth. I don't know why it doesn't, but I think it has helped my heart. So it hasn't dawned on me that, you know, probably somebody is looking at me right now on the streets who knows me as Lauren Soyo. As far as I'm concerned, I'm this normal person who just loves Jesus and anybody I find who is not hungry for God, I try and see how we can affect them with the same virus. Full stop. You know, whether we're popular or not has not really been my concern. It's not why we came, you know. So, but. For a more practical answer, let me just tell you that popularity is mercy, is grace. Let's call it height in the spirit. The fact that you are popular does not mean that what you are saying is as accurate as what some other unpopular people are saying. Popularity does not mean accuracy. Popularity also does not mean that you are the best that God has. In fact, I've settled out in my mind since that I am not God's best. The fact that I am out there is enough proof. God always reserves his best for last. There are people he is going to bring out. That's why I also spend time shutting down. Because one of the ways to lose track and get lost with the tide is this same thing that people are praying for, which is popularity. It doesn't allow you to be your best. It doesn't allow you to keep on going back and getting what you need to be a relevant vessel in the hand of God. So I advise people to see how you can, you know, set your heart on the Father as the mercy of God. See it like a DJ console room, you know, with mics. We have backup singers, and then from the sound or media room, you know, we have the, the, um, the mixer with all the buttons, all the knobs, and each button or each knob controls the mics. Somebody becomes popular when God simply does this on the mixer. The person's mic increases, people hear the person. It does not mean you are the best singer. It does not mean you are the best singer at all. Tomorrow, for his purpose, for his good pleasure, he can reduce that mic. So popularity, when you see it in the right context, you will see that sometimes it can be a cause, it can be a problem. When you have that posture of heart, you won't even let it get into your head. It's a, it's a problem. Before you could concentrate, now you can't concentrate and you're happy you're popular. You know, there are many dangers that come with it. Before, your children would have been raised without any pressure. Now, they have to be raised with pressure. 
you have to be doubly sure that these children don't miss it. Because all kinds of pressures other children don't have, your family is now having. They can't do anything wrong. Is that what you really want? Is that what you are praying to God? God, give me pressure. God, give me problems. God, give me... These are good problems in a sense. You know, we are not, we are not, we are not um, complaining or, or, or what. But you don't know how blessed you are to not be in everybody's face all the time. If God does it, fine. If he doesn't, fine. See the fact that, you know, God knows what he's doing. I'm saying this to those who knew that they are praying that they'll be popular. You don't know, you don't know the mind of God concerning these things. Focus on what is important and let God decide at what point the volume increases. And when the volume has increased, realize that he's trying to do something with the volume or with your life. It's not because you are special, you are better than the rest, who are not as famous or as popular, you know. That's what many people feel. You feel there's something special about you. Once that happens, you begin to go down and down and down until you can't help yourself anymore. So keep reminding yourself every single day that they are listening to me not because I'm the best to do this. It's not because I'm the most anointed. It's not because I'm the best preacher. It's not because I'm the most gifted. God simply increased the mic. Thank him for increasing the mic. And let him ask him to help you cope with the increase of the mic because many things come with that increase of your volume of your voice a lot of attention some of the women issues we spoke about will not happen if some people were not popular you know it comes with a lot of distractions many of you would have spent more time in the secret place if you were not popular and being dragged by the whole body of christ everywhere you know, a lot of things come with it that, you know, are almost like causes. Sometimes it's the downfall of a minister. That thing that you are, that you are praying for, that God should do for you, that everybody should know your name. You know, so focus on what's important and let God do what he wants to do. If you are popular, fine. If you are not, fine. Just ensure that you are in the will of God. That's what relevance is. That you are in the will of God part time. That's what relevance is. From fire conference to fire conference, from program to program, these men of God have blessed you. How many times did you gift? I didn't say your money. That's also important, you know. The Bible says that those who bless you in spiritual things, you should reciprocate by blessing in carnal things, you know. That's with, uh, with, with uh, money and all that. But what I'm saying now is, even much more than that, something more valuable than money, is your prayers. And that's very easy for you to give. You can just decide, every day of my life, I'm going to give five minutes to water, you know, these men who have blessed me. I'm pressing play on the song every blessed day and enjoying the presence and power of God. Somebody labeled and use it themselves as a vessel for me to enjoy this. The person deserves, you know, my prayers. If we do this more and more, we will have less people crashing, falling, and then we also pick up social media and start talking about the people we didn't pray for. You know, people won't burn out if we surround them with fire, with prayers. This is a very, very sad thing each time i get to talk about it i'm always moved to tears because right from the days of moses till now we find people sheep that don't surround shepherds sheep that you know will be protected by the shepherd guarded by the shepherd covered by the shepherd and so on and so forth and when the shepherd needs help needs surrounding you know we don't find those sheep coming around, rallying around to ensure that this person is not lost. Rather, we have them becoming wolves, tearing down these shepherds, accusing them of being fake, being devilish, being hypocrites, and so on and so forth. You never once in your life knelt down to pray for this one that is currently suffering depression, even though he's preaching to you every Sunday, because he doesn't have something in his life and is wondering if this high is going to keep on going. 
Abraham said, what are you going to give to me since I go childless? You know, yes, having encounters, yes, you know, God loving him, calling him friend and so on and so forth. But Abraham still had times where he was discouraged. You know, like every man of God, Elijah had those kind of times as well. You know, people have those times where they are burnt out. And I think one of the major reasons as well is that we don't have structures of people who surround us in prayer to ensure that the enemy cannot touch us. So if we can give ourselves to that, I believe we'll have less of these cases. Now to those who don't have structures to prevent this burnout from happening, please take a cue from what I have said. Have more time for fellowship than for ministrations. Your Lord Jesus was like that. He will finish preaching and then go to the mountain and go and pray. At one point, they came to call him and said, the whole city is waiting for you. He told disciples, we are going to another city to go and minister. You know, he was not a ministration freak. He was not a flyer freak. He was not a meeting addict. He was a presence addict. Jesus was a presence addict. And I had to learn this lesson as well. There were times when I would tell God, you know, I had fantasies growing up of of being very tired from aircraft to aircraft, from country to country, from airport to airport, from hotel to hotel, just busy for Jesus. It sounds very beautiful, sounds very wonderful. But I'm telling you, eventually you find out that this sometimes is foolishness. You should ensure that your fellowship time is always more than those times of service. Why am I saying that? Because you eventually find out that you achieve more with more fellowship than with more service and less fellowship. I have seen this practically for years now. And when I spend time shutting down, the volume of my voice increases in the nation with no video, extra video, extra audio, extra album, or extra anything anywhere. It just seems like I'm giving volume to what has already been done before. I was telling some people last year, I said, you have done enough to touch the world. What you have not done is pray enough. You have written enough books. You have done enough videos. You have done enough content to touch this whole world. What you have not done, what is left undone right now, is praying enough. Once you learn that secret, you will be looking for time to get out, to get out, to get out, to get out. People will be wondering why you are not running after opportunities to minister. Because you know that you are more advantaged inside than even outside. It's a sacrifice to come out. It's a sacrifice. I know people who don't want to be out because they know the benefit of being inside. When you are inside, you are stronger. You are more dangerous. You are more potent. So when you come out, Kai, apart from the fact that your value increases just by reason, you know, of not being commonized and being every single, every single way. Everybody that died, you are there. Everybody that is wedding, you are there. Everybody that is sick, you know, you are there. These are beautiful, beautiful things, but eventually at the cost of, you know, of, of e efficacy, at the cost of efficiency as a minister is dangerous. You can't be in every party. You can't be in every, every, every visitation. They will say you are a wonderful pastor, by the end of the day, they will stand at your barrier when you die because of stress. I say it was a wonderful pastor. If you rested more, gave attention to your family, spent a lot of time in the presence of God, many of those people that you buried, you don't have to bury, you just simply raise them up. So why do I have to visit 100 hospitals, to visit 100 sick people, when I can get so charged that I get them out of the hospital? Satan will tell you that you are being effective by being everywhere. God or the Holy Spirit will tell you that you are being effective by giving attention like Mary did to the thing that's more important. And that's the feet of Jesus. Once you can give attention to that, I'm telling you, ministry will be done in seconds. I can't begin to tell you how much stress we used to experience casting out demons back in the days. That's another interesting example. You know a person is burnt out by how much time they are spending, you know, in doing even ministry. Imagine Jesus, three hours, he's still casting out a devil. 
Just imagine him shouting, go, leave. And Demon is shouting back, leave me alone. I'm not going. I'm not going. Then he comes down. Okay, why are you not going? Because I've been here for 30 years. And then they start arguing back and forth. All right, when did you come in? And Demon is, you know, all those nonsense. He just says, out. At one point, he said with one word, all the demons screeched and left. So imagine Jesus casting out 30 demons. That demons from 30 demonized people or 100 demonized people only God knows how many they were the Bible says with one word you will do ministry more easily if you pay attention to this I remember 400 level 6 hours doing vigil with a demon possessed girl at Chapel of Resurrection me and a couple of friends <laughs> I will never forget that day in my life at the end of that night, I told God, see you, I'm not doing this again. Let me know how much praying I should pray. Let me know what I should give to this thing. So that when I stand to represent you, it will be happening in minutes. And by the grace of God, that has been the experience since then. So you choose the kind of ministry you want to do. If you want to be wasting plenty of time, doing what you can do in five minutes it's always beautiful to stand before a people and in three five minutes the atmosphere has changed and everything begins to happen and people are having encounters and what they have been thinking will take months happens in minutes is it not beautiful like that so why don't spend all those times with god and just get the job done in minutes then go everywhere and spend hours upon hours upon hours upon hours and they forget you before you even leave the hall What's the name of the man of God? They don't even know who the name of the man of God is. Trust children. They won't even remember the name of the auntie that came. Because there was no impact. But in your mind, you are serving God. It's not fair what you are doing to God's people. You are adding to the doubt, adding to the number of reasons those children will not believe God is real. Because everywhere you are going, you are presenting a God that does not, that can't do anything. So I want to advise that don't even get to the point where you are burnt out. Burnt out is, a, is an extreme case. Burnt out means you are already becoming the opposite of what you are saying. A minister is burnt out when they are preaching about holiness and sleeping, you know, with sisters in the church in the secret. You are burnt, burnt out. Everything has finished. Climb from that place. That's why I said if you are in that position, I'm not talking about three days five days get out of service for now jesus will not miss you the church will not miss you as well i promise you they will be back when you are okay you know we think that we will lose people when 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 we step out and we spend time with god ah, ah, what a lie what a big lie satan has told the church if you know how valuable you become when you spend time with God, you will know that people are wise enough to know where good is. They will travel, there are churches people attend from outside the country. I was hearing, you know, a story just this week in the church I went to. I was sharing the testimony of, uh, not really testimony, but just sharing experiences that some churches have. There are many churches I can mention right now. There are people flying from Germany every Sunday for the service. Every single Sunday for the rest of this year, they are coming in to worship on Sunday as if there's no church anywhere else. That's how much value a person will place on your ministry when it is very, very effective. All your excuses are a lie. Many of us are burnt out. We don't even know. We advise people not to be burnt out when we ourselves are burnt out. I had to advise myself, Lawrence, which one do you want? You want to be shouting, 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 or do you want to, you know, in minutes, without screaming, get the job done? It pays you so that you you also be on this earth for a very long time. You know, and not say you, you kid yourself, by the time you are 55, you are looking like you are 85. Meanwhile, there's no proof that you have worked yourself in your country. It's important that you give yourself to what is really, really important, so that your ministry can be very, very efficient. And God will help you. In Jesus' name. It's important that you set structure around that area of your life. When a person is desperate, a person can take desperate measures or desperate steps 
So to keep or preserve yourself, it's important to set up structures around your life. Strict things that you don't, strict rules that you don't break. And sometimes structures as far as persons that people have to go through to help preserve you as well. This is very important in our generation and in this time that we are living in, in the world. There are many, many challenges out there, you know, that the young minister is going to face if you don't set up structures to preserve certain areas of your life, especially, you know, your sexual, your sexual life, your sexuality. Um, in all fairness to some of these brothers or ladies, because it's in both ways. My my wife showed me, you know, some emails and text messages that also came in from brothers. You know, some of them ministers as well, and God revealed to them as well. You know. On a lighter note, one didn't stop even after we had gotten married, you know. So interesting things are happening. When you see somebody that desperate to claim their property, it's important that you to set structures so that it's difficult for these people to execute their desires. It's somebody that you see that you can go and tell what God said. You know, it's someone that you have access to that you can go and be saying that kind of rubbish to. But like I was about to say, in all fairness, not all these people, you know, um, began having dreams because they, you know, listened to your message, they liked you, and so on and so forth. Many of these people were being manipulated by the enemy, familiar spirits, because dreams can come from these, you know, sources as well. And that's why I had to put out that, that, uh, that post, because many of these people are innocently receiving these things. I was not too happy at all when the news of the wedding broke out, and then so many people started, you know, lashing out on people who have been having dreams, visions, and all that. I'm not saying it's good to be doing that. You have dream about a person, pray to God, speak to God about it, converse with the Holy Spirit, ask Him what He wants you to do about it. And if you're a lady, I suggest you keep on prayerfully waiting till it you know, comes to pass. If it's God that told you, then wait for Him now, it will come to pass. But the challenge now is God is telling 100 people, He's telling 150 people. He's telling 500 people all over the world for only one person, you know? It's obvious Satan is really, really out to confuse because what you end up having is a person who is now doubting the voice of God. A person who is now doubting God's love for him or for her. A person who is now not sure if they are even saved because if God could lie about or if God's word will fail about this, then are you sure I have been hearing God in the first place? So if you go deeper, you see that Satan was really taking advantage of, you know, all this to confuse a lot of well-meaning, innocent young men and women. And so my advice is, first and foremost, love Jesus more than you want to marry. And let this marriage thing find you on the path of your love and pursuit of destiny. I believe that will help solve a lot of problems. That's number one. Number two, in your hearing of God's voice, especially when it comes to dream, hold it lightly. Don't hold it too firmly. Because dream comes from many, many sources. It can come from your flesh, it can come from your soul, it can come from your spirit, it can come from the environment, it can come from the desires of strong spirits, you know, around you. When I say strong spirits, I mean even Christians. 
their desires can project dreams at you. There are so many things we don't understand as children of God. And so you're having dreams and the funny part is by the time your desire latches on it, that desire can keep on repeating that dream. It just becomes a loop, an endless loop. It can go on for years. You are having the dream every single week of marrying this person and you marry the person. The next dream you have children and the next dream you are already literally taking your children to school. <laughs> And all that was a lie, you know. Satan has not tried at all for many people in my generation. And it's because there's no understanding out there. In the first place, your life is not summarized by marriage. If you marry and of your destiny, what have you gained? So why not focus on destiny, focus on purpose, and let this thing meet you there. You receive the dream, you see the vision. That should not be enough to destabilize you. Ask God to keep proving, to keep, you know, um, shedding light on the matter and prepare your heart. But don't latch on a person and begin to... Another advice I'd like to give people out there is that the will of God is not necessarily a human being. The will of God is a position that a human being can fall into. I'll say that again. The will of God for you in marriage is not necessarily a human being, quote and unquote, listen carefully. The will of God is a position that a human being occupies. What does that mean? If that woman that you saw died, does that mean you're not going to marry again? Does that mean your whole life is tied to a human being? God being God, being a fair and a just God, will not do that to you. So because you didn't marry that man of God, you will not reach your destiny anymore. And it was of no fault of yours. You are following God, loving Jesus, and then you tie your greatness to another human being. You don't know who you are. If you know who you are, you know that it's a privilege for anybody to have something to do with you. What you'll be focusing on is getting the life and the destiny that was written about you out. And anyone who wants to associate with that, it's as simple as that. It's a position. Once a person feels into that position, that person is right for you. Or else, it means everybody, you know, who lost the person God revealed is doomed. They can't marry anybody else again. It means they are finished. But no, God has somebody who is even better that's going to come in line and help with God's will for your life. So please, let's note that and trust that our confusions will reduce and our problems will be minimized. Okay, yeah, this is the very first time Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO is interviewing a music minister and many of it yet to come. Thank you very, very much for going through this. Please make sure that you send it to your friends. Make sure they subscribe to the YouTube channel and don't forget to always click on the notification button. Thank you very much for choosing Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Until I come your way again with another guest. Keep fulfilling destiny. God bless you. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show with PVO. Modern Entertainment Beyond the applause of men We seek for something valuable And that is the soul of man yeah. And that is the soul of man Men and women So that forget Keep watching Beyond Entertainment Show.
with PVO.